Intel are finally announcing next generation Battle Mage graphics cards today, beginning with the ARC B580 and ARC B570. We've got all the details in this video, specs, performance claims, pricing, and even the announcement of XCSS2. So what does Intel have in store for the GPU market? Well, they're announcing the ARC B580 will be available on December 13th for $250 US, while the ARC B570 will come a bit later, January 16th for $220 US. These GPUs are targeting mainstream affordable price points. That's where they are starting out with Battle Mage, but these are not necessarily the highest tier, fastest cards that Intel will offer. With Alchemist, the previous generation A series, the 500 tier of cards was in the middle of Intel's lineup, with the more powerful A770 and A750 cards sitting above. The naming scheme for these cards Intel are announcing today implies similar. These are mid-tier models in Intel's lineup, and hopefully we'll learn about the flagship B700 series at some point in the future. The ARC B580 and B570 use Intel's greatly overhauled XE2 architecture. This new design features significant improvements everywhere, from the front end to the shader units to the ray tracing units, with the goal of lifting performance per core. Ultimately, Intel are claiming a 70% performance improvement per XE core, along with a 50% performance per watt improvement. Some of this advantage comes from the shift to TSMC's N5 process technology compared to TSMC N6 for Alchemist, but a significant portion of this uplift comes from architectural changes, enhancements, and fixes. For example, in this chart, you can see how XE2 delivers significant gains to areas like dispatch, draw core performance, ray tracing effects, and sampler feedback relative to XE1, normalized to configuration and clock frequency. Some of these gains are so large, it points to huge architectural weaknesses in XE1 that have been fixed in XE2, and this should lead to fewer games that struggle on Battle Mage. What Intel are announcing today is the BMG G21 GPU die, which is used for both the ARC B580 and ARC B570 graphics cards. This GPU in its maximum configuration has 5 render slices for a total of 20 XE cores, 20 ray tracing units, and 160 XMX engines. There's also 18 megabytes of L2 cache and a 192-bit GDDR6 memory interface. This design is fully unlocked in the B580, while there's a 10% or so cutback in core count for the B570. There's a few interesting aspects to this design from a hardware configuration perspective. With a massive overhaul in architecture, Intel have cut back the number of cores in the B580 relative to previous models. Just 20 XE cores is fewer than we got in the A580, which had 24, and a lot fewer than the 32 cores seen in the A770. But these cores benefit from not only that architectural overhaul, but much faster clock speeds as well. The A580 was clocked at just 1700 MHz, and the A770 at 2100 MHz. But the B580 is clocked at 2670 MHz, so that's a whopping 57% increase over the A580's clock, and a 27% increase on the A770. On the other hand, the memory subsystem isn't as strong. The A770 and A580 both featured a 256-bit memory bus, but on the B580 that's been reduced to 192-bit. Intel has somewhat compensated for this with faster 19 gigabits per second GDDR6 memory compared to 16 gigabits per second or even 17.5 gigabits per second previously, but that still results in less memory bandwidth. 456 gigabytes per second versus 512 gigabytes per second on the A580, an 11% reduction. The benefit to going with 192-bit instead of 256-bit is it opens up more sensible VRAM configurations. Instead of being stuck with an unsatisfactory 8 gigabytes or a more expensive 16 gigabyte configuration, Intel are offering the B580 with 12 gigabytes, which splits the middle and should be enough for this class of graphics card. It's certainly far superior to 8 gigabytes, which is quickly becoming insufficient even for mainstream gaming, and with Intel positioning these models for 1440p gaming, they are well aware that 12 12 gigabytes of memory is actually useful on this sort of card. The B580 also comes with a 190 watt total board power rating, which is 15 watts higher than the B580 and 35 watts lower than the A750. It's the same rating as the Radeon RX 7600XT from AMD, but higher than that of the GeForce RTX 4060 Ti. Cards will come with a single 8-pin PCIe connector, a PCI 4.0x8 interface, HDMI 2.1, and DisplayPort 2.1 UHBR 13.5. 
The B750 is a cut down version with a 10% reduction to the core configuration, bringing it to 18 XE cores. Clock speeds are also 6% lower than the B580 at 2500 MHz. Meanwhile, the memory subsystem gets a larger cut, the interface is reduced to 160 bit, and this means Intel have paired it with 10 gigabytes of memory, which is still better than the 8 gigabytes seen in this tier today. Total bandwidth is 17% lower than the B580 at 380 gigabytes per second. Where does all of this leave performance? That's the big question going into any significant architectural overhaul. Well, the following claims are based on Intel's first party testing, so as always, take them with a grain of salt. But this is where Intel believes the B580 will slot in. The comparison Intel are making between Alchemist and Battle Mage is the battle between the A750 and B580. Despite having a tier lower name, Intel claim the B580 will be 24% faster on average across a 47 game sample, some of these titles with XCSS enabled as you can see in the chart. This should put it ahead of Intel's previous gen fastest model, the Arc A770, and that's despite it having 38% fewer XE cores. The combination of the architectural gains and a 27% clock speed increase is able to offset the reduction in core count and memory bandwidth. Most of the titles shown here are able to hit 60 FPS or more using 1440p ultra settings. Intel are also claiming substantial gains over older products, in particular the 5 year old GeForce GTX 1660 Super, which launched at $230 US in October of 2019. For $250 US, Intel is suggesting the B580 is 96% faster, while also supporting hardware accelerated ray tracing and newer upscaling tech like XESS using Intel's superior XMX pathway. When it comes to current generation models, Intel claim the B580 is 10% faster than the GeForce RTX 4060 for 1440p Ultra Gaming. This correlates well with our testing for the A750 and Intel's claims relative to that part. A 24% uplift over the A750 and a 10% uplift over the 4060 would lead to a similar average result in our 1440p performance charts, around the level of AMD's Radeon RX 7600 XT. There were some rumours that the B580 would perform more like an RTX 4060 Ti, those don't appear to be accurate. The B580 falls between the 4060 and 4060 Ti according to Intel's testing, but closer to the 4060 end of that range. I have quite a few initial thoughts on this performance and pricing. Of course, again, this is based on Intel's claims, which I'm assuming are a best case scenario. If performance does fall around the level of an RX 7600 XT, Intel are effectively offering that level of performance for about $60 to $70 less than current 7600 XT prices, which are typically around $310 or $320 US. That's about a 20% reduction in cost for that level of performance, which is okay, it's reasonable. It also mean you're getting more performance and more VRAM than the RTX 4060 at $50 less, which Intel says should lead to 32% better performance per dollar in rasterization and 25% better in ray tracing. Intel provides similar numbers relative to the RX 7600, of course, with the 7600 being a little stronger in raster than the 4060, weaker in ray tracing and also featuring just 8 gigabytes of VRAM. That value proposition relative to current generation models, again, looks reasonable, and Intel mentioned in their briefing that they are committed to making these cards the best value on the market. My gut feel though is this falls short of being great value or outstanding value, and there's a few reasons for this. We polled you guys, our audience a few days ago, asking what is the maximum price you'd consider paying for a hypothetical B580 GPU that offered performance near the level of an RTX 4060 Ti. And 44% of you said $250, with 25% saying $300, and 18% saying $200. What we now know is the B580 is closer to the 4060 than the 4060 Ti based on Intel's claims. So if GPU buyers would only be willing to pay $250 for 4060 Ti levels of performance from Intel, the B580 will be a little bit underwhelming. The general sentiment in the comments was that people were only willing to buy an Intel GPU at this sort of value proposition because of the uncertainty around drivers. Arc GPU drivers have come a long way since the early days of the A770, and with this release Intel are boasting about continuous software improvements. But until Intel have a proven track record with GPU drivers, gamers will be hesitant to buy an Intel GPU unless it's at a significant discount, and I'm not sure the B580 at $250 would qualify as a significant discount. Steve will provide an update on game compatibility in his review of the B580 when he gets to testing it shortly. 
The other factor is the prospect of incoming next generation NVIDIA and AMD GPUs. I'm not sure how long it will be until we see next gen products from those companies targeting the sub $300 price range, but new products are coming very early in 2025. The RTX 4060 that Intel compared the B580 to is nearly 18 months old, and it's a similar story with the RX 7600. While pricing might look okay relative to current generation models at the end of their product cycle, it remains to be seen whether this level of value is good enough to fend off new products from the two main GPU brands. Intel will need to continue offering this level of value relative to AMD and Nvidia even after new products are launched if they want to build market share, and I suspect that will mean price cuts down the line. Intel may only be able to benefit from launching first and offering superior value in the current market for a few months until competition really heats up. The Arc B570 is also in a weird position. It's launching a month later for $220 US, which is 12% less than the B580. However, if you look at hardware specs, it has 10% fewer cores, clocked 6% lower, and it has 17% less memory bandwidth and VRAM. We don't have any performance claims for this model, but the hardware configuration points to more than a 12% reduction in performance relative to the B580, so it could be a situation where the B570 is worse value despite being lower in the product stack. Again, I think the pricing of $250 US for the B580 and $220 for the B570 is going to look okay compared to current soon to be last generation cards, but to really build market share, fend off new GPUs, and make it very hard to look past an Arc Battle Mage card, the B580 would probably need to be priced more like the B570 at $220, with the B570 priced more like $180. Time will tell on that one, and of course we'll have to see where performance and value lies in our review. Let's talk more about what Intel has announced. The Arc B580 will be available as a limited edition model from Intel directly, kind of like a founder's edition or reference model. Intel says this new design has been optimized for increased airflow and performance relative to the A770 limited edition with a similar overall aesthetic. These cards will also be available from a variety of board partners, including brands seen previously, such as ASRock, Gunia, and Sparkle. Intel are yet to convince the biggest vendors to get involved, like Asus, MSI, and Gigabyte, but hey, there's more OEMs now than at the launch of Alchemist. Launching alongside Battle Mage is XCSS 2, the next version of XCSS that adds frame generation and a low latency mode, very similar to what we've seen from NVIDIA with DLSS 3 frame generation and reflex, as well as AMD with FSR 3 frame generation and anti-lag 2. The way Intel have described the operation of these new XCSS2 features is very similar to DLSS3. Frame generation is interpolating between two rendered frames to create an additional frame to increase smoothness. This is done through optical flow reprojection along with motion vector reprojection and other inputs. Intel say XCSS2 has two AI models, the optical flow model and a blend model that combines the outputs generated through optical flow and motion vector reprojection. The UI is composited onto each frame at the end. Complementing this is XE Low Latency, an equivalent to NVIDIA Reflex that looks to lower game render latency to help mitigate the lack of latency improvement from enabling frame generation. Like XCSS2 frame generation, XELL needs to be integrated into games. The FPS increase seen from XCSS frame generation is set to be pretty similar to what we've seen previously from NVIDIA and AMD's frame generation tech. Enabling XCSS2 will slightly lower the native render rate of the GPU, but the output frame rate will be higher and smoother. For example, in F124, Intel are quoting an increase from 82 to 136 FPS when using XCSS quality upscaling. 136 FPS after frame generation implies a native render rate of 68 FPS, so a bit slower than native, but doubled up to that 136 FPS of output smoothness. Where XELL comes in is to try and mitigate the latency impact of running frame generation. Of course, if you enable XELL and compare frame gen enabled to disabled, frame gen will always lead to higher latency, as seen from this chart. This is because the native render rate is lowered to run the frame gen algorithms, and there's also some things with how the frames are paced out to your display. So like with other frame generation technologies, Intel's frame generation is not being shown to improve latency. But the idea is to use XELL in addition to frame generation so that you get the best possible latency experience when frame generation is enabled. This is exactly the same sort of situation as DLSS3 frame gen with Reflex. 
Crucially, XSS two-frame generation requires Intel hardware, specifically their XMX AI engines featured in Alchemist and Battle Mage. This means XSS two will run on older Arc GPUs like the A770, in addition to the new B580 and B570, but it will not work on AMD or Nvidia graphics cards. Intel say they have received requests to create some form of XSS two-frame generation that works on other GPUs, but at this point it's Intel only, though that does also include XE-based integrated graphics like Lunar Lake. XSS2 will be coming to a range of titles, including Dying Light 2, F124, Marvel Rivals, and Assassin's Creed Shadows. XSS adoption has been very solid considering the relatively small market share of Arc GPUs, so I'm keen to see how that goes for XSS2. The SDK for this technology also includes updates that enable support for DX11 and Vulkan titles, but XSS2 does not include an updated super resolution model for increased quality. Other software features Intel are launching alongside BattleMage include an overhauled Intel graphics software utility. This updated utility includes frequently requested features like an FPS metric in the overlay and display scaling settings. There's also expanded overclocking tools, including the ability to adjust board power limits, the voltage frequency curves, and memory from within the app. The utility will also include a driver-based low latency mode that again is very similar to what Nvidia and AMD offer in their drivers. This along with the launch of XSS2 is Intel bringing their software up to the level offered by their competitors. So that's pretty much all the information you need to know about Battle Mage for now. Intel are keeping tight-lipped on their plans for future B-series products, so hopefully this is just a start. It's good to see a focus on value for the B580 and B570, given the lower parts of the graphics card market have been badly neglected over the last few years. So fingers crossed it lives up to that end of the bargain when we get to testing it over the next week or so. Anyway, that's it for this one. If you're interested in more Battle Mage coverage and that sort of thing, then please do subscribe so you'll get our review, which will be coming next week, into your inbox as soon as it is available. Look out for that around the launch of the B580. As always, if you want to support the channel, we do have our Patreon page. Links to that is in the description below. You'll get access to some cool benefits if you sign up, like our Discord community, great place to chat about tech. We've also got monthly live streams, BTS content, plenty of good stuff. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.